So once we've created our artwork, how can we use the width tool on it? You'll see I have this character here, my illustrator superhero, who I've drawn using a combination of the pencil tool and the pen tool. And I've already created some different weights of stroke. If we open up the layers panel and if you want to follow along, you can open up width tool artwork start AI from the shapes folder. And if you open up the layer here, you'll see that I have separated elements into face, arm, hair, body, etc. And what I tend to do is I'll maybe take the arm group and maybe give that a slightly heavier weight of line because it's more near the front of my character. I start to create a variety of weights using that, but it's still a very even weight of line. So what I tend to do is go in and I'm going to open up my layers and I'm just going to lock everything except for the arm. And then I'm going to go in and start adjusting the width of these strokes. Now, if I try and use my variable width tool, you'll notice that even though I have multiple strokes selected, I can still go in and adjust the strokes one at a time. Now, if I open up my navigator, what we're going to do is just zoom in a little bit. So I'm using the arrow keys to go in increments of 10. And that allows me just to get into a little bit more detail here. So let's just increase that a little bit more. OK, I can also use Command plus and minus on the keyboard to do that. OK, so what I'm going to do is move it across here and then pull it down at the beginning. So we're tapering it off. I don't want it to taper the same amount on each side, though. So I'm just going to create a new width profile here. So we're getting it moving to a fat end quite quickly here and then tapering it off more slowly here. Now, if I want to be absolutely sure of the measurements, what I can do is come in here and just type in measurements. So I double click one of the width points and I can enter precise measurements. So I could go to maybe a value of two at the ends and a value of four in the middle. Now you can also adjust adjoining width points as well and that will adjust them in perspective as well. So that's really handy if I've adjusted this one but this one hasn't adjusted. Click on that and it will keep it in perspective. I can also delete points in here as well, just by clicking delete, that will delete the width profile of that stroke. So variable widths are also useful if I toggle to the hand tool by holding spacebar and moving up here. Also handy for things like the eye, if I zoom in even more tightly on the eye, you can see her eyelashes here. And if I just go and allow myself to work on the face layer, we can select those and start to make adjustments to them. So I'm going to zoom in really tightly on the eyes and I'm going to select these strokes. And with my width tool, I'm just going to pull the width profile in at the end of her eyelashes. And I get these really nice eyelashes, which are thin at one end and thick at the other. I'm also going to adjust the profiles of these. So we'll just pull those in at the ends. And you can see that I start to make really nice quality lines. Let's make that heavier in the middle there. Slightly heavier and then slightly thinner at the ends. OK, so you'll see that you start to get a really nice quality of stroke by adjusting these. Now you will get straight edges at the other end of the stroke. You can adjust them just by clicking and dragging the points. Or if I double click the stroke, I could go into isolation mode and select the stroke and go into my stroke options and give it a round end. And that's another way of creating this nice round ended stroke. So if I do that with all three eyelashes, we can just give them all round caps, which is going to look a little bit better than having a flat edge there. Same happens if we go back out and I'll open my navigator again, zoom out a little bit and move that down to the Basque region. Sorry, that's a bit of a pun there, Basque region. The region of her Basque, I should say, which is this element here. So it's her clothing. It's called a Basque, apparently. So I'm going to unlock the Basque. And again, here, what I would want to do is make adjustments to these individual elements within the Basque. So I'm going to unlock that, make sure my layer is unlocked, otherwise I cannot get access to that, even though this is unlocked. So make sure the layer is unlocked and this basque is unlocked. Then I can select that and edit it. Again, it becomes tricky to work with multiple selections like this when you're working in groups. So I double click to go into isolation mode and that allows me to select individual lines. 
Now, again, I can give them variable widths by choosing the width tool and just fattening them at the top. Now, it can be a bit tricky to do that, so let's just zoom in a little bit, see what's happening here, and I'm just going to move that across. Now, you'll notice because that anchor point is kind of on a curve, that the width is actually going down the length of the stroke. And this can happen sometimes if you apply a variable width to a curve. So what I tend to do there is I select the tool and just take out that curve. And by removing the curve, when we go back and adjust the width, it's much easier to have it behave as we would expect. Now, unfortunately, I don't think there's any way of being able to adjust the angle of that. I'd love to be able to pick that up and drag it just up a little bit. But as far as I'm aware, and correct me if I'm wrong, you can email me via my website at angietaylor.co.uk. I believe there isn't a way to actually do that at this point. Now, if I want to delete that one, I can delete that one and I have this nice variable width stroke. Again, if I want to, I could put a round cap on that or extend the cap using a projected cap. Now, a couple of little things to show you. Let's zoom out again. So I'm going to use Command minus on the keyboard to zoom out. And we're going to have a look at this area here of the boot. And you'll notice that I have some lines here I want to extend. I only want to extend them in one direction. So let's just come out of isolation mode. So I'm going to exit isolation mode. And this time, we'll have a look at these lines down here. If I want to make this thicker at one end and thinner at the other, I don't really want to extend the width on both sides. And if I just use the width tool as it is, let me just unlock that so we can actually work on it. So I'm going to select it by holding down the command key. Let's zoom in on it so we can see it a little bit more clearly. Now, first of all, there's an angle there again. You can see that handle creating a curve. So if I select the width tool and click and drag on it, First of all, it's kind of going in the wrong direction because of the curve. Now I can hold down my modifier and select the selection tool and adjust the curve, but that's adjusting the shape of the path. Now I've also got a round end on that and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but let's undo. And instead, what I can do is I can hold down the Alt key and now when I adjust the width, it only adjusts the width on this direction. So I'm not extending it outside the shape that I already have. So holding down the Alt key will allow you to create a variable width, but maintaining one edge of your stroke. So that way I can now select this one and just adjust the width here. Again, holding down the Alt key and we'll adjust the width up here. And you'll see now that because we've adjusted the width on a specific side, we've kind of disguised the fact that we have a problem with the edge here. And of course, if you wanted to, you could select that stroke and just remove the round cap from the end of that. So holding down Alt will allow you to adjust the stroke either on the inside or the outside of the path. Now, finally, another really useful thing, if we double click this to go into isolation mode and then just select that path, you'll notice it's actually created a new variable width profile. So by using the width tool, you can actually create your own custom width profiles. And these can be added to profiles. So if I click on add, I'm going to call it Angie's shoe profile. And we can now build up a list of weighted profiles to use on the rest of the image. So I don't have to go through and manually tweak every single line in my massive file. All I need to do is create a few width profiles that I'm happy to use, and then I can apply them to the image. So let's exit isolation mode. And you can open up the finished one, which is width tool artwork end, to have a look at my finished width profile artwork. And here we have the finished artwork. And if we open up the navigator, and let's just zoom in a little bit, you can see that how adding these variable line widths to existing strokes really changes the quality of the drawing. And you'll notice that I have a few width profiles up here saved that I've been using, some of the standard ones, and then some of my own ones, my shoe profile, one for line work, one for the Basque artwork, and one for the eyes. 
Now, instantly with the eyes, you want one to go in that direction for one eye and one to go in that direction for the other eye. And that allows you to create tapers moving in different directions. I've also added round caps to the end of the eyebrows. So have a play with variable line width. You'll see that even if you don't have a pressure sensitive pen, you can start to get the feeling of being drawing with pressure, even without using pressure sensitivity, using variable width strokes.